Lauren, do you think you are an influencer? Do you like that term, influencer? I didn't used to, but I think I think I've grown into it. I think it it carries a lot of weight that people don't realize. Um, but I think I've slowly grown into that role. Is that because of your following, or is that because of the changes that you're trying to create through your content, through your media, through you as a pers- personality first, right? I think it it comes with understanding the gravity of what what that truly means, and and what it means to be someone that people are following and are you know they want to hear from so i I think there's a bit a bit of responsibility there how did you get into the social networking space because that's not your first thing right you were doing things before that and then you blew up online um sort of i so my online thing came completely by accident um i was uploading posting accidentally have to TikTok and I thought I was saving things to my camera roll but they were going up and going viral so every all of that happened by accident I just sort of fell into it I never wanted to be in the public eye and it just sort of fell into my lap and I it was at a point in my life where I was really really desperate for a community and I found that and so I've sort of carries that with me through my own career I think that's a really interesting point the community angle So a lot of the work that we do, and we're all about building that community, especially as women or people who identify as female non-binary, we lack the sense of community, especially when you get into adulthood, right? You lose friendships and you have to recreate friendships whilst you're trying to figure out who you are in this new space. How has community helped you through the more tougher and darker times? I mean, I always turned to social media, especially at, you know, between the ages, I would say 13, 17, even now as an adult, my fans have sort of grown alongside me which has been the the most amazing experience because I've always had someone to turn to and I think there's so much there's so much of a negative connotation surrounding social media so much of the time that people forget how beautiful it can be and I I think you know there's always been that connection that's driven and motivated the entirety of my career when you get burnt out or when you're just not having a great time online, what do you do to recenter yourself? Huh, so I live half in LA and half in Pennsylvania. So I always go back to Pennsylvania and spend time with my family. I didn't get to do that a lot growing up because I was working mm-hmm. and my dad stayed on the East Coast. So it's nice now to have that to, to run back to um, and giving myself that grace and the opportunity to do that. And so after a long period of work, what is that like first meal that you really want to get into that's like your comfort? Oh my gosh, in and out In and out really? Or any like gross American like pub food, chicken wings, burgers, pizza, like I just go and demolish it. Yeah. Do you have a favorite dessert? Um, I'm not a huge dessert person, okay. but I do. I love strawberry short. Mm. Or, okay. I would say those or like Italianized. I'm from Philly. So yes. um cool worries it's like a big deal and all that's very cool yeah and given that you are quite vocal about the woman empowerment scene which is how we obviously connected here what can we be doing to encourage more women females uh people who are non-binary to really show up online as their versions of themselves and be more authentic and kind of you know in not so many words not 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 fuss about what other people really think well i think What's always helped me, I guess, show up online is I, I think so often we scroll past people's posts and don't say anything. And I've been trying to get better about interacting with people because I think drowning out any possibility of a negative comment with positive ones because the internet works like one person says something bad and then everyone has something bad to say. So I think if you're scrolling past someone's feed, like it takes two seconds to comment and like nice. And I think genuinely those those small you know those things that you think are so small can truly change the trajectory of some more day their week you know how they view themselves and i guess inspire other people it's other day, day, right so i don't know i think that it's all about those little things that add up yeah no i love that for you so just to just to, i always say like it is free to like click and share right right like it doesn't cost you any money but it could change someone's life like yours is significantly new change do you consider yourself a business person I would say, I would say yes. I think I've been sort of trained throughout my career to think because I'm a woman, I'm not capable of being intelligent and having a good yes. But 
I've been building my own thrift That's nice. I'm a, I'm a teenager. Yeah. And I feel like there's been so many times throughout my life that I haven't been given the credits that I deserve. And now as an adult, my confidence has sort of comes full circle because it took me stepping back from, you know, the record label industry and, and all of, my whole team now is women. I only surround myself with I can women. see. And there are great men out there. We do. There are great men out there. Close. But there were so many times that I felt so misunderstood, so underlined. And the surrounding myself with women who understand that mentality have also experienced that. Yeah. And, you know, working with them day in or day out has completely changed the way that I see myself. Absolutely. Um, so I, I think we definitely need more of that. And I love the fact that you're reclaiming that power, which I think is a big part of your platform and my platform too. It's reclaiming the power being like, we are more than capable. We are deserving. And actually, this is our space. Right. Right. We, we are taking back that space. Absolutely. You talk about the women in your life. Who are the women in your life that inspire you, motivate you, and who you consider role models? Oh my goodness, there's so many. My mom, of course, first and foremost, she's incredible, taught me everything I know. She is the most independent, you could like this, you need to, badass woman that I've ever met. Um, and I'm so lucky to have been raised by her. Um, my team, you know, they're, you know, CEOs and incredible. Um, my best friend Brooke yeah she's you know she's been the biggest emotional support everything support um she's this she's my other half I'm not even basically she is my other half I'll see um and I also even grew Brooks you know her mom is incredible and and I spent a lot of holidays with them and I'm grateful to know her so yeah there's there's a lot of amazing and would you say that the bigger you get and the bigger your business gets because you are a business right and I want to make that really clear like a business the bigger your brand gets, the smaller your circle get. Oh, my circle's always very small. Oh, that's good. Okay, good ways. So that you know, the people that I've kept closest to me have been there for the past you know seven, eight years, and I like to keep it that way. Um, I'm I'm always open to making new friends, but of course, yeah, I'm sure you know it can be difficult. Um, and I wish it wasn't that way. I wish you know it was easier for. I think. I guess if I had one message, it would be to be more open and receptive to, to people, and especially women, and hear what they have to say. I mean, even so many times this week, I've been like, oh, man, I wish she respected me a little more. Just just a little bit more, right? Let me see you. What are some of the incidents? So I'll give you an example, right? Like, even the fact that I'm wearing a bold or bright color, the comments, some people are like, oh, my God, you look great. Other people are like, well, you're here trying to seek attention. Am I or am I just wearing an outfit? Right. Right? Small microaggressive comments like that yeah. are quite draining and they just on repeat. What are some microaggressive comments that maybe you've had, but also how do you block out that noise? Yeah, I mean, not even two days ago, I was approached by someone who asked me, asked me what I do. And I, you know, explained I have a platform and I, you know, do what I can to advocate for women and sexual assault survivors. And um, their response was like, it matters. Like, oh, like it matters. And, cool. and, you know, and, and the thing that's so difficult about that is as a woman, your immediate response is to be like, oh, okay. and you don't, you don't want to be combative. You don't want to be argumentative. You don't want to stand up for yourself. And I think it's taken a lot for me to sort of learn that it's okay to stand up for yourself, um, especially in moments like that. Absolutely. So, and I didn't, and I wish I did, but, um, and you're just sort of, sort of agreeing. Of course. But the idea that you have enough self-awareness now to be like, I wish I did that. And next time these are the steps I would take. Like you said, your words, it's a small, significant steps that really right. matter. Next time you know, actually even saying that's an awkward comment or what do you mean by that? One thing I love to do is I'm like, that's an interesting comment. Let's unpack that a little bit. Right. Why do you think that? That's an interesting comment. Where did that come from? And it's just to bring it back to them as a question and they shut up because they're like, oh, we don't know where it came from. Right. How do you empower yourself? Like, what does a typical self-care day look like in your life? Well, of course, there's the very surface, you know, do my skincare and go for a run, go for a hike, take a walk. But I think truly the thing that has made the biggest difference in my life is surrounding myself by, with like-minded people. Absolutely. And surrounding myself with strictly people that are there to lift me up and nothing else so it, and it's hard because you know we're sort of conditioned to think that you need this huge group of people to be happy and you need this person so you can go out into the day and you constantly have to be 
entertained and surrounded by people, but I've found that my besties are the ones who are around and with my, you know, three closest friends and as like that. So what I'm really hearing from you is reserve your energy. Yes. Make sure that you stand up for yourself, speak up to yourself, and really support other women around you. And don't be afraid to shoot your shot, whatever that looks like. My final question to you is, what is that one piece of career advice that you wish you knew when you were starting this journey, be that as a teenager or now as a kind of young adult, be that as, you know, building a brand or building your business? Well, for in a, on, on a personal level, I wish that I had had more confidence in myself in the beginning. I think it would have saved me from a lot of situations where I, I didn't follow my gut and I should have. Um, but for other people, I guess it could kind of go hand in hand. You know, trust your gut, um, listen to yourself because you know what's best for you and no one else. So I think, you know, remaining true to who you are and trusting yourself are the, are the most important. Well, Lauren, that's a great way to end. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're super busy. I'm really grateful. And of course, you should connect with Lauren and follow her across all socials. So thank you. Thank you.